Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Heather Shah. And on behalf of Kaulwas, I would like to welcome you all to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Today, we have a very interesting topic, and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker who is going to talk about the secrets of success and happiness in life. So what is success and what is the relationship between success and happiness? Do happy people are successful or successful people are hap only happy? We will get the answer right in the session. So stay tuned because in amazing stuffs are coming ahead in the session. So before we start, I would like to thank for uh, the Kalwas for arranging such enlightenment sessions and for their support and providing such a platform. The aim of Carlos is to give you the opportunity to interact with the world-renowned speakers, teachers, authors, researchers, experts, professionals, and businessmen to share their views, experiences, and tips which will create an impact and will enable you to learn new things and develop yourself in order to grow individually as well as to contribute to the world at large. As our slogan is to come, learn, and share knowledge. So today our guest is extremely professional and known for his excellence, commitment and dedication to the field. And above everything, he is an amazing and humble person to talk. So let me introduce him formally. Today our guest is a teacher with the power to inspire. His teaching has up till now come to cost life changing impact on the thousands of learners and hundreds of educators in ELT domain. His experience span over 30 years of active professional engagement and in varied uh, national and international setting, including English language teaching, research and presentation of workshops, seminars, webinars, and keynote speeches in and outside Pakistan. He has successfully imparted various trainings, completed multiple projects, and supervised PhD, MS, and master thesis. He has also uh, rendered services as an editor of research journal in Pakistan, Philippines, and Thailand. Besides, he has developed ELT materials for textbooks, managed and moderated high-profile event at his campus and elsewhere. And he has served uh, on university, government of SIN, higher education commission, Islamabad committees. He enjoys membership of various national and international organizations. He is a foundly invited motivational and academic speaker across Asia. He merits special appreciation on the count of his particular and praiseworthy contribution towards youth empowerment, inspiring thousands of youth from less developed districts of Sindh, especially from his hometown, who have now grown to be internationally acclaimed individual in their own rights. So in 2005, he represented Pakistan in the United States of America in civil education project under uh, uh, International Visitor Leadership Development Program. In 2006, he earned diploma in ELT from Cambridge University, UK. In 2007-8, to eight, he taught in multiple institutions in Dubai, UE. He has traveled quite uh, extensively. So far, he has been to the USA twice, UK twice, Turkey once, UAE twice, uh, two years resident and three uh, uh, non-resident, Malaysia thrice, Singapore one, Indonesia twice, Sri Lanka twice and Thailand seven times. Uh, he has uh, published 53 research publication in higher education commission recognized journals and international journals to his credit. In addition, several national and international recognition and awards have also been confirmed upon him. Moreover, he enjoys a huge fan following in almost entire Asia ELT spectrum. He is also currently the Pakistan Deputy National Director of Na International Society for Teachers, Researcher and Administrator. The Global Thailand, besides being member of the Board of the Studies and Board of the Faculty of multiple universities in Pakistan. He is the author, teacher, researcher, and above everything, he's a good human being. So please help me in welcoming our today's guest, Dr. Ghulam Ali Borero. On the behalf of Carlos, I would like to thank you so much Dr. for taking the time to talk to us today. And thank you very much for accepting the invitation. It's a great honor to have you with us. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much, Dr. 
uh, Heather Alicia Saab for your kind invitation. And without much ado, without any wasting any other moment, since we are time bound, we've got to start off at six o'clock and finish by seven, hopefully. So I would straight away be yes. sharing my slides, and I hope that the learned participants are able to, you know, to you know, spot my slides. They can see the slides that I put on display. We begin in the yes. gracious name of Almighty Allah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, thereafter, um, all of you can see the title. That's the secret of success and happiness in life, and it's been organized by Colvus. Uh, of course, in collaboration with, under the umbrella of Bahia University, Islamabad. Today we are on August 8, 2021. Mm -hmm. I am Professor Dr. Ghulam Ali Burilo from University of Amsterdam. Uh, uh, I mean, each slide, each dot is showing that, you know, four slides of some basic facts. After that, I'll be sharing with you operational definition of the key term that are success, life, success and happiness. Thereafter, we'll talk about the power of being positive and what exactly the role of responsibility towards happiness and success and the significance of social responsibility and then the importance of aptitude. We'll then be discussing the value of work. And uh, of course, we'll then be talking about the charisma of consistency and then uh, I'll uh, you know, present to you what I believe are the five senses of success. And having presented those five senses of success, I would be sharing with you 10 other skills that I believe are instrumental and imperative for success and happiness. Then I'll talk about the seven success questions. Then, of course, we'll take up our commitment to 10 happiness values and then the magic of love, 15 happiness deeds, and then choose your words carefully and then the power of the present and heaven of hope. And then this might really be followed by all the questions and answers. And then we'll conclude, and then you, Dr. Shalza, might also tend a vote of thanks. So this is the outline that I'll be following throughout my presentation. Now, let me tell you, my dear friends, who are all listening to me, please see that happiness is crucial. Every one of us wants to be happy. There would hardly be anyone on the planet Earth who wouldn't say that he or she wouldn't really be happy. So. Happiness and success both are, I believe, one of the two top things that entire mankind might be pursuing and pursuing madly. And devotedly and, and dedicated published about happiness and success. Universities around the world are teaching this. And for 30 long years. Here, scientists have been researching exactly what could be the reason that might make us happy and what exactly the secrets of happiness and what it is that might make us humanity, mankind unhappy and what it is that is steals away our happiness, what it is that hijacks our happiness, what it is that takes away our happiness, what it is that brings us happiness. So all these big questions perhaps have been researched by, by the scientists and the governments are now, I mean, there has been a trend in the last five years where different governments in different countries have been appointing certain cabinet positions for it. I mean, there have been ministers and even Bhutan going either for GNP or GP. And UN has, United Nations has named a day after it. And Google analysts have said that millions of people are, in fact, seeking after happiness. It is such a crucial topic. By this slide, I'm actually trying to drive this point home that happiness is something that millions and billions of people all around the world and all different across the countries and all continents want. But the question remains, how many of us can really get happiness and feel happy and be happy, become happy and make others happy? This is a big question that will cut across this presentation. Then we have certain statics. The world does not present a pretty picture. Does it, my friends? 220 million children and 1 billion adults suffer from anxiety, depression, and conduct disorders. Now, imagine 220 million children. Children learn from us. When they see us struggling for happiness, when they see us that we us and the adults are not happy, they learn unhappiness from us. I mean, we pass down this unhappiness to those also. We pass down this anxiety to those children also. We somehow hand down that depression to those 
children also because children have no way else to look look for it they look at it as for happiness for success for enjoyment and then harvard university has researched thousands of people for extended years commencing while they were 15 and ending when they were 75 they have conducted a research research on pe- people from the age groups starting from 15 year age when they were of 15 years extremely young adolescent at the in the adolescence and then ending when they were at the extreme advanced years like 75 what mean that they have cut across almost all age groups and they found those happiest who were the happiest among those people when you are 15 years of age and when you are 75 years of age and somehow you have lived all your life they picked up their sample from all different age groups and having picked up their sample from all different age groups they studied them for continued long years say for around 30 35 40 years they went on observing collecting data and then they found that those happiest who maintained harmonious relationships right a few moments ago while we were in an informal chat shasha was asking me what exactly is the, why do we associate our happiness always with the things why not with other men who we live with who are who we lead a life with who we spend a life with so they have found that those people who have been maintaining relationships who have been into harmonious relationships who have an amiable relationship who have affable relationships who have congenial relationships who have sweet relationships who have tolerant relationships those people are much happier than the other people so as per the topic of my presentation today for example i say what exactly are the secrets of happiness and success the first secret of happiness and success to me that harvard university has found help me find is the relationship your ability to maintain to establish to develop and of course then to maintain your relationships the more you know cordial relationships you could maintain the happier person you will be we all want our children to lead a happy life right my friend in the audience will you not agree that we all want our children to lead a happy life build relationships grow up to be kind compassionate happy adults well they cannot be why they aren't really able to do what we want them to be we are us as unhappy and somehow unsuccessful people but we always desire our children to lead a happy life and we are want them to build relationships also and we want them to be grow to be kind and compassionate happy adults but what exactly is the real picture they aren't really much happy why because they children learn unhappiness from us how can we make others happy when we ourselves are not happy how can we give so give something to somebody which we don't have unless we have that thing we really cannot hand it down to other people so we don't look after either or our children emotional health which is the best predictor of happiness in both cases another thing is the emotional health now emotional health is not really always associated with money it is your contentment it is your quality to overcome your circumstances it is your power to override your own circumstances it is your reaction if i ask you life is an action or reaction you'll come to realize that 95% life is based on our reactions the way we react to different situations the way we react to different phenomena and the way we react to what happens to us we might fall ill but the way we react and respond to that illness if we have the ability to fight that illness if we are happy from inside if we can override that illness if we can overcome that ailment if we can defeat that ailment by the power of a will by the power of a soul by the power of a mind by the power of a wisdom by the power of knowledge then i believe we are the winners so is life an action or a reaction i believe but when we look around at the world it does not really present a pretty picture of happy people on a happy planet why because we don't associate it with relationships we don't also associate it with emotional health of our children if the children are happy if we take them out and give them what they want and 
groom them and train them and tell them their limitations and also spend time with them and go on training them because we have only left our children to school and to the school master and to the school mistresses and to their teachers. We have actually a big disconnect with our with our own children. When they come back home, we don't have time for them. We come back late from our offices. We come back late from our businesses. We don't spend any much time with our children. We don't groom, groom them really. We, don't, we believe that we give them money. We send them to expensive school. We send, send them to expensive institutions. We believe that all is done. We are happy and we leave our children. They are not happy children. We don't look after their emotional. We don't look after their sentiments. We look up, don't look after their feelings. We don't look after their passions. Maybe some five to six generations ago, this was, they used to have a happy childhood. I had a happy childhood because I had no tuition centers to attend, because my teachers would teach me enough in the school and whatever they would teach me in the school would used to be much, much enough, more than enough. And I have never had any need to go and attend any tuition center. I didn't have to carry big, heavy bags, which children could really carry. And I didn't have the load of books on my back. I was a happy child because in the evenings for us in my school, it was a mandatory to, to report for sports and I used to play cricket and one of my teachers would guide us and they will take our roll call, they will take our attendance and anybody who would not attend those games and wouldn't involve himself or herself in the sports, he would be marked next day, he would be punished. So where is my happiness? Where is my childhood? Where is Children do not do not have any childhood. They are actually grown up men of 7 years, of 13 years, of 9 years, of 11 years. We have overburdened them with so many things with the grown-ups alone do. And we say the children do what all the grown-ups are doing. So we have in a way snatched, robbed them, deprived them of their childhood. My dear friends, then how could they be happy? How could we be happy? Anyway, then there's a flip side to what, I've been, what we have been told. We believe, we have been told that if we work hard, we'll succeed. If we'll succeed, we'll be happy. My dear friends, wrong. The world statistics and researches show that now only those who are happy can work hard. Those who are unhappy can never work. They can never work hard, so to say. Why are you putting the cart before the horse? Why not put the horse before the cart? And he say, all right, hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work, and you'll succeed. No, you'll, you'll grow ill. If you are happy... Only then you can work hard. And after you're happy, you work hard, then you become happy. And then you grow successful. Neuroscience proves that happy, positive, and optimistic people, those who are happy, I'm talking about neurosciences. I'm not talking about my own mind. I'm referring and citing to those neuro leading neuroscientists, top neuroscientists in the world. And they say neuroscience has somehow come to prove that those people among us who are happy, who are have a power, who possess a positive mindset and who have optimism, these people can perform better, earn higher, achieve more, accomplish more aggressive goals, remain Armor. In high pressure situations, experience less than 18 hours. Those people who were who were, who had a five fighting fiber in them, who were happy, who were positive, who were optimistic, who were not run down. They were able to override the disease. They were not defeated. And the people with a weaker heart, with a negative mindset, with a stressful heart, with a narrow soul, they succumbed to this pandemic and lost their lives. So my dear friends, it is our immune system is closely associated with the way we feel inside us. And the way we feel can always help us fight all the great, you know, most virul virtue, vir sorry, virulent diseases in the world. And neuroscience also proves that Happy people can engage in more meaningful relationships. So this is the entire flip picture. My God. All along we have been told work hard, work hard and do that you will succeed. And once you will succeed, you will be happy. But it's the other way around. Excuse me for a second, please. Yeah, okay. And then. One of the secrets that I found is giving is a part. Our bodies and brains are hardwired, right? 
our endorphins up scale when we give endorphin is a natural you know booster inside us i am talking biologically i am quoting from biological sciences once we give the endorphins up scale they lie they rise in our bodies their love level goes up and we feel happiness we feel oxygenated we feel excited we feel thrilled we feel happy and this level of happiness automatically when we are ready to give when we become ready to share when we become ready to care when we become give we, we become ready to reach out when we become ready to help out when we become ready to lend support somehow our endorphin levels move up in our body and we feel happy this giving gives us natural high feelings and the world world is now calling it helpers high those who are always in a bit bit to help they feel high inside them their their you know adrenaline levels also goes up and when giving our oxygen levels rise and serotonin that our body is happy transmitters they also go up it's better to give than to receive the science and psychology of giving is gaining roots and popularity nowadays giving is a natural anti aging remedy for our cortisol which are our stress hormone hormones their levels drop when we become willing to give and when we really give and when we practically give and when we virtually give when we impart thing to other people when we share our riches with other people when we share our time with other people when we share our love with other people when we share our affection with other people when we share our money with other people when we share our all other things that we might have with other people the crystal crystal soul which are correct cortisol that are our stress hormones they go down and giving reduces our stress let me now tell you what is life life is actually without definition it's a blank paper whatever you may write whatever meaning you might lend to it whatever you may do your decisions your actions your choices your struggles your 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 way of life your perspectives your points of view your your, your you know the way you actually look at life life you are born the it's an empty paper it's a blank paper it's a blank page you have to fill it with all the colors that are there you have to fill it with meaning you have to lend it a purpose and the purpose you give to it will become the meaning of life so you are we are so blessed we are so lucky we don't have any pre written anything that is there and we believe that okay we know the god's message god god has given us that this you know the capacity to, be, to choose between right and wrong we know what is right we know what is wrong we know what is good we know what is evil we know what is virtue we know what is vice we know what is negative we know what is positive and god almighty alhamdulillah has given us this power power to distinguish power to differentiate power to tell apart and once we and in the light of divine powers in the light of divine light in the light of divine wisdom in the light of divine rational approach we move ahead and we make decision and we tell apart between vice and virtue and then in that within that limitation whatever meaning we might give to life life will take on that meaning and life is an opportunity it is just once nobody has lived twice nobody has lived beyond 24 hours god has given everybody right from bill gates to steve jobs to golam ali to everybody else to any other person all people live their life within 24 hours and they make or mar build or break their life within the framework of 24 hours and then it is our response as i earlier said with the way we respond to life the way we respond to situations the way we respond to phenomena the way we respond because if we are responding optimistically bravely courageously like heartedly not without any stress with a lot of responsibility with a lot of resolve with a steely resolve we can always always have our way in the life you know the storms and the winds favor those who are brave those brave navigators are friendly fem and then life is time life is not money life is time we measure our life by time we say how old are you we say i'm 24 i'm 48 i'm 54 and this way life is time those of us who respect time honor time use time utilize time and put your time to a proper use those of us will be happy those of us will will be successful because we none of us god has sworn upon time and time is something we can never waste we we waste ourselves we waste ourselves and we blame time we say we are wasting time how can we waste crucial so valuable say all right time may waste us if we don't really you know respond to the call of time time will waste us 
what is success? Success is the balance of excellence. Now, what do I mean by excellence? Academic excellence, professional excellence, research excellence, professional excellence, excellence among relationships. You might maintain your relationship. You love humanity. You love your family. You spend your time with your family, with your kids, with your children, with your students, with your learners, with your clients, with your bankers, with your customers, with everyone else, with your neighbors, with your relatives, with your kids, with your kids, with your family, with anybody who falls somewhere in your life, with your friends. Your professional life, your academic life, your personal life, your your fam family life. Now, once we are able to bring about that balance, excellence based balance. Once we have this balance, and we could achieve this balance. So many of my friends can call me and tell me, "Oh my God, we saw you in the afternoon. You were presenting a, a kind of a talk in somewhere, uh, you know, through virtual means to another country. Whereas after one hour, we see you celebrating the birthday of your son, and one moment you are playing with your granddaughters, and in the moment we see in the morning you are in the office. This is what I say: success is balancing." Bring them out a balance of this excellence. The more you are balanced, the more you can budget your time wisely. The more you can budget your time smartly. You know your priorities. You set your priorities accordingly. And once you go according to your priorities, once you have this sense and smartness and wisdom and excellence to put your priorities in the right order, in that case alone, you will succeed. Success to me is nothing else. What is happiness? Happiness is sense of balance again, as I said. It's triumph over circumstances. It's presence of positive emotions. It's having deeper sense of meaning and purpose. You simply not, we are not animals who might eat and sleep, walk around and do. We have, have, we have to have some purpose in our life. We have to lend some meaning to our life. We have to live for ourselves. We have to live for our family. We have to live for our kids. We have to live for mankind. We have to live for the world. We have love to live for humanity. We have to put in our share. We have our duties to God. We have our duties to society. We have our duties to people. We have our duties to neighbors. We have our duties to our family and once we are able to do all of our duties properly only then we can say that the happiness will come bouncing back to us happiness is balance between body mind and soul are we reading are we feeding our souls are we with the with the you know a soft music with gentle talk with a lot of reading are we actually catering to our mind do we go out in the night do we care to look at the stars have we seen the moon shining how many years it have been that we have never seen the moon for two minutes have we seen at the blue sky have we ever interacted with the fauna and the flora and the species and the grounds and the universe and the cosmos have we ever spoken to the stars have we ever taken care to look at the shining bright wonderful luminous star that God has created for us? Do we go for exercise? Do we go for regular workout? Do we take care of our body? Do we take a shower every day? Do we avoid things that might ail our body? Do we avoid sick in our body? Do we do things which might sick in our mind? We must not see things which might sick in our mind. We must not see things which will pollute our soul. So these healthy habits, my dear friends, unless we have all these things, how can we claim to be happy? Then let me quickly share with you the some of the secrets that I believe are there, the secrets of success and happiness in life. Number one is developing positive attitude. The power of positivity is your biggest power. No matter how people are, people are rude to you, ignore. People want to fight with you, ignore. People really want to take up conflict with you. You talk that get out of those conflicts. You have so many other things to do, my dear. You got time is to you're just 24 hours. You must not be indulging in a kind of negative stuff, in a kind of negative clutter, in a kind of negative clamor, in a kind of undue arguments, in a kind of unnecessary parlance, in a kind of unnecessary things. You know you need to develop positive. Sometimes some people may not be good to you, but once you continue to be good to them, there would be a time, a day, a minute, a second. They'll have to have a thinking back. They'll have looking back and they'll reconsider their attitude to you. And by your positive attitude, will in the end be able to win their negative attitude. So first thing is to develop positive attitude. The second one is... Nobody else, if we are not ready to help ourselves, nobody else is coming to help us. If we don't take responsibility our own life, who else will? We'll have to take responsibility of our life and career. We should not always... Looking up to other people. 
a bad workman blame blames is our tools we must not blame our tools we must not blame the shifting responsibility we are here this is our life this is our our career this is our way ahead this is our pathway this is our sole responsibility to take care of body of a mind of a soul of a time of a parents of a family of all the things that are there and the kind of self responsibility that has befallen us that has been put up put upon us and this way once we are individually responsible for our own life and we can develop this sense of responsibility the more responsible we are the happier we will be and more successful will grow and become then social responsibility also we should not be using things with in a way directly or indirectly implicitly explicitly maybe contributing to it we must not throw away the jar empty jar anywhere we must not litter our streets we must not pile up our street and never the garbage and trash we should not throw away trash everywhere we must know what is social responsibility how we are responsible to other people we must wear masks while we go into public places because god has blessed us with a lot of knowledge and wisdom he has blessed us with literacy we are responsible people even when we may not be literate we may say yes once we are moving out we should also give equal share to the social responsibility you go to europe entire west if you are talking big about waste what is so big about waste the only thing big about waste is their improved sense of social responsibility they would not transmit disease to another person if they would have flu they'll cover their nose if they'll have any other influence or something they would always make sure that they are not moving out unless they are wearing masks they do not litter their streets they do not litter their spaces they do not actually ignore government advice they do not violate traffic rules they do not break traffic rules they do not break any rules and regulations at all in any case so the more socially responsible we are there are better chances greater chances of us being happy because when we will not actually cause any problem to other people and other people will not cause problem to us and those other people will not cause problem to all other people this way we will give birth to a healthier society and once we are a part of a healthier society a cohesive society a caring society a much socially awakened society a much socially responsible society only then we will be happy because our happiness is not just an individual pursuit our happiness is always linked with the happiness and actions of so many other people it is a chain reaction if i do something wrong it's gonna cause problem to someone else and it's gonna cause problem to someone still else and this way this chain reaction will go on and it will roll like a snowball and this snowball effect is gonna be everywhere everyone in the society would one one you know one way or the other be taking the loss and if the society is moving at properly every one of us will be taking the benefit so this is this this way round so i think secret three can be becoming socially responsible and then secret four is know your aptitude when you are young be congruent with your highest value what exactly it is that taps your heart what it is that resides in your heart what it is that actually has stolen in your child harvard university research reveals that 85% people those achieve career success because they do what they want to do because they the, the, the decisions are not thrust upon them they pursue careers they do start doing things they go after vocations that are closer to their heart that are actually from their heart and rousseau says yon jack rousseau one of the greatest philosophers in europe says do what you desire and desire what you can do wo log bade khush kismat the jo ishq ko kaam samajhte the ya kaam se aashqi karte the hum jeete ji masroof rahe kuch ishq kiya kuch kaam kiya kabhi is kaam ke aare aaya kabhi is kaam se ulajhta raha bilakhir humne tang aakar dono ko adhoora chhod diya that's what face up says so we should not be in adhoora we should just know what exactly it is that comes from our heart it does not come from our mind it may not come from our mouth what comes from out of our heart we must know what it is that we are born for what it is that we are cut out for what kind of pursuits are actually bringing us happiness where we see that we have our sense of fulfillment is it in the social service sector is it in the civil service is it in teaching is it in music is it in movies and i believe that the best example i can present is of three idiots that indian movie when you see un- unless you pursue what is your highest congruent value you really cannot be happy neither you can be successful even after you are successful you will not be happy and even if when you are happy you will not be successful so desire fuels drive drive by you know fuels passion 
passion fuels devotion devotion fuels the struggle and struggle fuels success you need the flame of desire to light the fire of success labor of love ceases to be labor when you love doing something you don't feel as if you were doing it as if you were working when i go teaching in the morning and never really in the last 24 30 years and never felt that as if i were working I, as if i'm going to uh, pursue my passion this is what is the job of parents and of scientists do you think that scientists are working though they work the highest they work the more, more maximum time they spend their 24 hour round the clock in their laboratories but none of them has ever tired of what they've been doing why because they simply love what they're doing and this is exactly the case of mothers and fathers they've never been tired of raising their children supporting their children scaffolding their children why because this is the labor of love and labor of love comes from you need to identify that congruent value you need to know your aptitude you know where you are actually destined for what you are cut out for and you if you can identify your well vocation earlier on see the example of paulo colo when paulo colo's parents would ask him my son what you want to be he would always say i want to be a writer and they would scoff at him and they would laugh away and they would say have you ever seen a writer leading a happy life with a lot of money with highest financial status he too would laugh back and he said whatever it is i'll go and become a writer and the writer he did become and not only a writer he did become is one of the most popularly read widely read novelists in the world today and he also is financially the best person very rich he has set up so many different you know social work charity organizations so please follow your aptitude and then willingness to work we really can never be happy unless you are willing to work work is worship genius is 1% inspiration 99% perspiration a genius can begin a book but only perspiration sweat will finish it why because if new one nobody can become a writer unless he or she is willing to write two three pages every day and then he has to edit it and proofread it and post read it and pre read it and check it for error and all that so writing a book producing a book inventing an, any invention making a discovery you know taking the world by surprise and marveling the world will not be possible unless you are ready to work my dear friends work is alone that makes us happy and successful and how many of us are really 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 by heart willing to work why always we have an attitude of avoiding work why it is difficult for us for us to get out of bed in the morning why don't we really truly love work and once we genuinely love work everything else will work it took webster 36 years to compile a dictionary and nowadays we are simply saying webster's dictionary webster's dictionary webster's dictionary and how many people is it benefiting millions and billions of people will ever live will seek benefit from webster's effort of 36 years it took him 36 long years my dear ladies and gentlemen in the audience and john milton used to wake up 4 in the morning to write paradise lost his most famous poem long poem epic and then we talent brings a great work only labor can finish it you can be talented you can you can start a work by your talent but you cannot finish your work by talent it is only hard work that will help you finish your work so success and happiness are just not possible without work work is the only impetus behind all progress in the world head work hand work and heart work when your head works you are rational you are responsible when your hands work you earn a money and when your heart works you spread love and hope in in the mankind and in the world secret six is never give up walt disney was rejected as a cartoonist by all newspapers of his time only one priest trusted him and gave him this job of making a caricature and then he grew to be one of the greatest people in the world because he did not give up though he was rejected by all the newspapers that were available in his time addison failed 10000 times while inventing bulb and at 1000 time he said okay all my mistakes have now been burnt up i'll begin a new i'll begin a fresh new york times turned right brothers a week before that they who invented the plate they, they turned they turned they were mad a newspaper like new york times declared right brothers as mad people but they did not give up and in the end they were able to give the world the aeroplane and the aviation industry 
McDonald's started business with only $100 and went to 10,000 homes and received only one order at the first time. McDonald's visiting how many homes on foot? 1,000 homes on foot. How much money he had? Only $100. And how many orders did he receive first time? He received only one order, but he did not give up. Henry Ford forgot to put gear in the first vehicle invented, you know, car. There was a man in the U.S. who failed in business when he was 21, lost election when he was 22, flopped business when he was 26, lost his beloved when he was 26, suffered a nervous breakdown when he was 27, lost Congress elections at 34, yet he became the president of the United States of America because he did not give up. He was Abraham Lincoln. Now let us create these uh, five senses. Sense of responsibility, sense of reality, sense of time, sense of balance, and sense of love. If we could possess and project these five senses, I believe we'll be much more closer to happiness and success. Secret eight is we should have these skills, right? We should have soft skills, multicultural communication skills, online presentation etiquette skills, analytical skills, time management skills, decision-making skills, study skills, social networking skills, teamwork skills, negotiation skills, interpersonal skills now for example those who those of us who cannot black or red black or red black or red tea or coffee tea or coffee this or that we are always indecisive and once we are indecisive we don't have the power to take decision we create a lot of negative energy a lot of negative stress a lot of virulent stress a lot, a lot, a lot of you know harmful stress decision making right or wrong think a hundred times but make a decision. And once you take a decision, stand by it, no matter what, what may come. So decision-making skills are very important. But somehow, we are neither learning nor teaching decision-making skills. We don't allow our children to decide. We never ask them to take a decision. We are always saying, oh, no, no, no. He or she might lose money. He or she might waste money. We must never do that. We must encourage our children to learn to take decisions. They may take wrong decisions. They may talk, take inaccurate decisions. They may take incorrect decisions. Same is the case with time management. Instead of doing everything for our children, we should tell them to learn to do those things on their own. They should budget their time. They should you know, know how exactly to classify their time into different categories and teamwork skills, how they should be good with other people, what are the new norms of you know, negotiating with other people, how the interpersonal skills might work. So once we have all these 12 and many more skills, I wish I could have shared with you. But because of limitation of time, I would beg your excuse. Secret nine is think about the following seven questions. And I invite every one of you who is listening to me to kindly give due attention to these seven questions, you know, these seven questions. What are those seven questions? Question number one should be what I have. And then look back what you really have. Do you have parents? Do you have home? Do you have facilities? Do you have a lot of money? Do you have resources? Whatever, whatever, whatever. But how many times have you ever thought exactly what you really have? What blessings? What Rooms, what facilities, what comforts, what resources, what 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 strengths, what weaknesses, what pitfalls. So you should think about it. What I have, what I want, what I can, and what I should, and what I will, when I will, and how I will. And you say, how will this will give you an entire glow picture of your future direction and of your future effort and future endeavors? And you'll never be plucked at anywhere. You'll have a clear avenue available to you and you'll go on going. And this way you will not only be happy, but you'll always be very, very successful. If you really analyze these seven questions, give them due attention and due time and due work and due thought. I believe. You could really be very happy people. 
and be credible. Let us not backbite, judge and comment, be rude to other people. We should not be bragging and exaggerating and presenting ourselves more than we are. And we should not really be making any false promises. And we must learn to say no because something we cannot do. We are sure, we are certain, we are confident that we can't do it. We should say very politely, I really cannot do it. I really cannot do it, sir. My apologies, my sincere regrets, but not we are really be able to do it. Just don't go and go on saying yes thoughtlessly. And this way you go on losing your image and reputation in the world of others. And this in the end brings you a lot of disrepute and disrepute brings you a lot of unhappiness and unhappiness will not let you succeed and you will be in failure so these things are also always interconnected and let us not learn to tell lies let us be as truthful as would always be possible for us and this is the best of all we are born so that we could love and we are love we love so that we are able to live we really cannot we must learn to forget because if you're not willing to forget we'll not be able to forget and if you're not willing to forgive we are not able to forgive we'll not really be able to love and if you are not able to love we really not 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 be able to live life would be possible when we have a lot of energy of love and god almighty has created reservoirs of love as we know reverse mountains of love inside us and all we need to do is to activate those reservoirs and love will never be running out of love the more we love the more love we give the love multiplies the more we distribute it the more it multiplies the more we give it away the more it away you know rises so love is an energy an endless energy an endless reservoir an endless ocean of love have been given to us by almighty allah all we need to do is to spread among the people be willing to activate that energy to unplug you know that that energy and we are trigger that energy and the inner volcano of this energy will follow and let us learn to do the following deeds let us learn to care share be kind be humble be polite extend help be loyal be sincere understand others take care of others be a winner but give a loser a sincere hug let us be fair let us value relationships let evaluate ourselves periodically let us learn to take risks let's learn to let go and let's learn to choose and let's learn to lose gar bazi ishq ki bazi hai jo chaho laga lo dhar kaisa jo jeet gaye to kya kehna haare bhi to bazi mat nahi but sometimes how can we argue with our mothers how can we argue with our murshid how can we argue with our mahboob we these are the places these are the times when they are losing is the only winning so and let us choose our words with caution words have the power to reach and touch they have the power to make and mar they have the power to build and break they have the cup give hope and hurt words but is greatest power one reason why sufis would not speak much was the fear of misuse of that word all misunderstandings in the world are a result of reckless use of words so let us learn to use words very cautiously life is here and now let us learn the power of now nobody has ever the future is so unpredictable we never know if we will be living tomorrow or not what the next moment might bring to us what in the world will be in the grip of pandemic so let us learn to live our life now think into now see on now here and now here and now is what is important and secret is faith have faith hope to sense of humor these things will take us forward in our life and uh, thank you very very much indeed thank you very much uh, dr gulam ali it was wonderful presentation superb i was just enjoying what you were saying i loved the tone which you were saying the different things i loved the energy level which you have i really salute to you it's a wonderful thing and i could see uh, everything was coming out of your heart as you were speaking from the heart and the way you carry his knowledge it's a, such a vast knowledge that everything was just flowing and uh, i could see the fluency i could see the flow which was wonderful superb i really really enjoyed and i loved your statements different phases <laughs> like the head work hand work heart heart work so what the, the five senses of happiness 
So whatever the different questions people asked, you have yeah. already addressed it. Not only addressed it, you have uh, connected the different dots by linking the practical examples for them. So many doubts, uh, even in my mind, you have cleared it with the wonderful message you have and what a powerful content you have. I mean, I must say that uh, you must have spent a lot of time while preparing these powerful content. It's so wonderful to see. But still, there are some questions which the audience wants to ask from you. And uh, if you just allow me, I would like to ask you the first question. Yes. The Please, sir. First question, uh, we can yes. be here for another 10 minutes. May I be here for another 10 minutes? Because uh, I have then one of the one of the commitment. I'm sorry. For, for 10 minutes, I'm there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Welcome. Sure, please. Yeah, yeah. So the the first uh, this the uh, student want to ask the thing that uh, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. That is the quotation uh, by one of the uh, writer. The person wants to ask the question that unfortunately in our society the success is measured by amount of money one has. If you have more money, it means you are more successful, which is not true, obviously. I have seen millionaires who are not really happy and alone, so they can't be called as successful in life. So how to make people understand that success is not associated with money? Your take on that, please. It's an happiness, both. Because, uh, you know, when we are in a state of pauperism and in a state of extreme, uh, you know, you know, excruciating poverty, we'll again not be happy. Money can bring us comforts. This is one thing that is to be understood. Money can buy an air conditioner. Yes. Money can buy you the best crockery, the best silverware, the best diamond wear in the world. It can help you buy biggest ever limousine car. It can help you buy a jet plane. It can help you build courses all around the world. But money is only as long as the comforts of life are concerned. But the way you can respond to those happen situations of life, what if you're actually losing your son? You are a but you have lost a son in his, in his youth. Somehow he has died. And now this money will not come to your rescue. What will come to your rescue is your inner power, the power of your mind, the power of your being, your knowledge, your wisdom. And if you are a billionaire, but still you have not read many books and you have not negotiated life, you have not really experienced the semi side of life, you don't have any wisdom. And without wisdom, wisdom is superior to money. Wisdom is superior to comforts. That's why all the Sufis, all the mystics, all the great men, all the great philosophers, all the great scientists have never targeted money because they knew that wisdom is superior to money. Money can come to a certain level, help you out. But uh, after and beyond those levels, it is not money they'll be bell bailing you out. It will be your sagacity. It will be the strength of your mind. It will be your wisdom. It will be your vision. It will be your power of mind. It will be the quality of your soul. That will help you sustain the biggest losses and celebrate the biggest successes. All because of the health of your mind, because of your emotional health, and the, because of the day depth of wisdom that you will have that's why I, I don't say that money is not important money is very important you can buy a car like a zone of comfort will be your wisdom will be your soul will be your mind yes sir yeah perfectly answered dr Ghulam Ali. it was a wonderful elaborative answer for that person and I hope uh, he will take the advice of you and will enjoy his life. Uh, since we have the lime, uh, time limitations, so we will take one, just last one question and your take on that and then we conclude the session. Uh, the second question the person wants to ask is, uh, is happiness a choice? Uh, he recommends that uh, according to Thank author you. Jennifer Moss in her book, uh, Unlocking Happiness at Work, she believes that happiness is a choice that we need to make every day. She concludes this based on her research, interviews, and case studies. So you are take on that, please. I agree with that because generally our life is made up of choices. We can choose to stay away. 
we can choose to answer we can choose not to answer we can choose to strike up a conversation we can choose to end a conversation we can choose to get, get away we can choose to be there we can choose to walk away we can choose to enter a class on time we can choose to be punctual we can choose to be regular we can choose to be de de dedicated we can choose to be you know happy we can choose to be unhappy we can choose to be submission of choice and consequences every choice comes a consequence once we are making our choice we should be responsible for our consequences we can choose yes. anything that we wish to choose but we then are morally responsible to act his own choices and he or she must not blame other people so we may for example one some person might say okay i am choosing not to marry or all right you don't get married but whatever may be the consequences of an unmarried life should be accepted morally by that particular person so every small day every day actually is a set of choices that we make and those choices actually yes. determine the drill of our day and in the end i agree with the author and with the person who is actually citing it that yes life is all about choices but we must make careful choices but we must make wise choices and our choices must be guided by our wisdom not by our you know short sightedness we should have far sighted choices those choices should be determined and guided by our vision by our experience by our honesty by our integrity by our knowledge and by our wisdom if our choices are super uh, super guided by these uh, Uh, you know powerful forces i believe our choices will generally be correct and our life will be very happy yeah yeah very nicely said dr gulam ali once again what a elaborative answer you have given uh, i'm really enjoying and i love uh, and i want to hear you for another 2 3 hours because the way you are speaking and the way you are explaining is so wonderful that uh, i really enjoyed this whole session uh, but since we have the time limitation so we will take a uh, what's your message to the world as a teacher researcher trainer learner and professional and educator what message you would give to the world please ah uh, yeah my my message is uh, to to spread love and hope my willing to give yeah. Yeah. to give we need to get out you will kindly bear me out that i'm not charging any money right i'm giving yes. and this very sense of giving is actually up scaling my level endorphin level and from inside i feel more fulfilled i feel rewarded i feel i have a purpose in my life and the more i can reach out millions and different thousands of youth if in any way one of my words it's a few of my words could bring about some happiness some 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 goodness some virtue some success in the lives of other people so i believe my only request if i not call it a message my humble request would be for all of us to be able to give to be responsible to be to love our country to love our people to love humanity to love mankind we are here for a brief sojourn this life is very very mortal we are not immortal only our souls are immortal our bodies are migrants here we'll be moving away one day or the other sooner or later we are gonna go and once before we go we must spread hope we must spread love we must give support to the people we must love all mankind and the biggest of all messages would can be please do not hurt any this is the wow. biggest wow. lesson of life yeah very wonderful let message us, to the world yes let yes. us learn to be incapable of hurting let us mm -hmm. learn to be incapable of hurting others and if we could not hurt others i think we have done our job yeah that is what the scholarly and uh, activity you have done you have squeezed uh, the ocean into a drop uh, so that is wonderful and uh, i really second your opinion that it is wonderful message to the world that please do not hurt anyone and and this is uh, the way i would just uh, conclude the session that i would say that it is our choice how to be happy in life and to define what is real success and what is real happiness we live in a world where everything is too fragile and has to come to the end so i believe that we should stay humble and care for each other 
and my father used to say that give importance to people and relationships rather than to the money but unfortunately people value money over relationships that's the dilemma and we can change it by changing our perspective of life and we need to change the lens to see the world in a different way only then we can enjoy our lives and contribute to the world in a better way so that's all uh, we have today uh, for this session i would really uh, thank to the dr gulam ali burero for his wonderful presentation for his wonderful energy the tone the powerful content the way he presented everything the way he answered the question was so wonderful and above everything as i mentioned in the beginning of the session that he is so humble and down to earth but even though his stature is so high that we could see his achievements in his life is full of achievement and he is just like a mentor and guru for us he is our leader he is the gym and we uh, uh, we follow him we admire him and we want to be like him as he is leading uh, the world in a different form and he is representing pakistan and he is representing the academia at, to the next level and we really appreciate his efforts and contribution to the field and i would like to thank our audience who joined us if you have any additional question regarding this uh, session today please email to us or you can connect to the speaker directly through his email or uh, you can contact through him on social media thank you you all for support and liking our sessions stay tuned as many sessions are on the way please do not miss any session so till next session stay safe and blessed bye bye